الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Dear brothers and sisters, in these few minutes, I would like to share with you a act of worship which every Muslim here, or at least the majority of us, are building the momentum towards. An act of worship that we can describe as being the path of the prophets and messengers, the path of every revivalist who succeeded in bringing about great change and reformation in his or her society. We speak today of an act of worship that is undoubtedly one of the cornerstones and the key ingredients, tying the knot and repairing a broken relationship between ourselves and Allah. A key ingredient in restoring Iman, repairing broken hearts, reviving spirituality. We speak today of an act of worship that is revived in the first day of Ramadan in one of the most breathtaking and exciting of ways. An act of worship that is then abandoned and neglected in one of the most depressing of ways after the end of Ramadan and the beginning of the first hours of Eid. We speak today of a paradise on earth. We speak today of a gift from Allah Almighty to humanity. We speak today of Qiyamul Layl, the night prayer, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. As Imam Tirmidhi narrates in his Jami on the authority of Abu Umamat al Bahili, he said, Alaykum bi Qiyamil Layl, fa innahu da'bu salihin min qablikum. وَهُوَ قُرْبَةٌ لَكُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَمَكْفَرَةٌ عَنِ السَّيِّئَاتِ وَمَنْهَاتٌ عَنِ الْإِثْمِ He said, hold on to the night prayer because it is the way of the righteous people before you and it is a means of drawing closer to your Lord and it is a means of erasing sins and it is a means of protecting yourself from sins. Focus with me, dear brothers and sisters. This is going to be the template for the short reminder of ours today. This one hadith that you and I just heard is enough to transform our perception towards the night prayer, an act of worship that the overwhelming majority of us will be carrying out on a nightly basis in the month of Ramadan in the form of, in the form of Salatul Taraweeh. What is Qiyamul Layl? Is it limited to bowing? and prostrating in the middle of the night. What is the night prayer? Is it an act of worship that is exclusive to the nights of Ramadan? What is the night prayer, brothers and sisters? It is a way of life. Let us re-examine those sentences that we just heard. Back to the hadith. Memorize these four parts if it's the only thing we take away from today. He said, إِنَّهُ دَأْبُ الصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ the night prayer is the way of the righteous people before you. How dare we speak and make mention of the name of any human being when talking about the righteous people of the past before the name of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was his relationship with the night prayer? In the surah that you are all familiar with, Surah Al-Muzzammil, Allah Almighty said to him, Qum al-layla illa qalila. Get up and pray the night. Arise the night, except a small part of it. Nisfahu awinqus minhu qalila. Pray half of the night, or a little bit lesser than that. Awzid alayhi wa rattili al-Qur'an tartila. Or pray more than that, and recite the Qur'an in a measured recitation. Surah Al-Muzzammil, this is a quick footnote is according to the majority of the scholars, the third or the fourth surah given to the Prophet Muhammad There wasn't much Qur'an around at the time, but Allah Almighty says to him, pray the majority of the night. So if we say that Surah Al-Muzzammil is one of the first surah of the Qur'an given to him, we can then say that the instruction to pray at night is one of the first instructions given to the Prophet of God Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to prepare him for the heavy luggage that lie ahead of him. Allah then says in Surah Al Muzammil, describing the night prayer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inna Rabbaka ya'lamu annaka taqumu adinamin thulu thayil layli wa nisfahu wa thulu thah. 
Allah Almighty says to the Prophet I know that you are spending little under two thirds of the night praying to me or half of it or a third of it and a group of believers with you what was he doing sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for two thirds of the night what was he doing there was only a few chapters of the quran around surah al-muzzambil is number three or number four there is very little quran what was he doing in the night what was he reciting was he repeating the same surah over and over again was he engaged in dua and istighfar and remembrance of allah Allah Almighty knows best, but what we do know for sure is the status of the night prayer in the eyes of the Prophet ﷺ that stayed with him till the day he died. Back to the hadith, hold on to the night prayer because it is the way of the righteous people before you. Listen to the words of Abu Zinad, Kuntu akhruju ila masjidin nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi sahar فَمَا أَمُرُّ عَلَىٰ بَيْتٍ إِلَّا وَفِيهِ صَوْتُ قَارِئِ He says, we used to make our way to the mosque of the Prophet ﷺ in the city of Medina in the latter part of the night, in the darkest portion of the night, just before Salatul Fajr. And he said, every single house that we would come across, we would hear the recitation of Qur'an. Everyone was awake. Not Fajr, the night prayer before Fajr. He said, And we, the young boys, whenever we wanted something from the elders and we needed to find them, we would say to one another, let's meet up during the hour of recitation. The last part of the night, the uncles and the aunties, everybody will be awake. Tawus ibn Kaysan al-Yamani from the Tabi'een, he also says, Ma kuntu ara ahadan yanamu fi sahar I don't remember ever seeing anybody sleeping during the latter part of the night. Everyone was awake. It is the way of the righteous people before you. And when a man came to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal to study hadith, and he wanted to spend the night with him, Imam Ahmad prepared a container of water for him so that he can wash himself when wanting to pray at night. When Imam Ahmad came to wake him up for the prayer, he noticed that the water was unmoved. Ah, he, he didn't pray at night. So Imam Ahmad said to him, Subhanallah, Rajulun yatlubu al-ilm wa la yakunu lahu wirdun min al Subhanallah, you are a man who is pursuing Islamic knowledge but you don't have a portion of the night? A student of knowledge who does not pray at night? This confused Imam Ahmad, and perhaps we should say the same words. Subhanallah, an organizer of an event like this, a volunteer in a charity organization, a giver of material at a halaqa, an attendee of a halaqa, and they don't pray at night? A Muslim who is a parent who wants to raise his or her children to be protected from the tribulations out there, and they don't? Pray at night? A masjid committee member, an ISOC committee member, a FOSIS member who does not pray at night? A Muslim who believes that the angel of death shall be seen and the squeezing of the grave shall be real and the waiting on, of the day of judgment is 50,000 years long and there is no prayer at the night? Can this be? Back to the hadith, he said, it is the way of the righteous people before you. And then he said, phrase number two, I hope you are memorizing this hadith. He said, it is a way of drawing closer to your Lord. Qiyam, it is a way of drawing closer to your Lord. Whoever is looking for one of the shortest stairways that lead to the pleasure of Allah, you and I will find it in the night. For those who ask about one of the widest doors that lead to the pleasure of Allah, you and I will find that in the night. And perhaps this is the secret why Allah Jalla Jalaluhu offers so much to the people of the night. The prize, what is the full prize? The answer is, we don't really know. Allah Almighty said, Their sides forsake their beds. Their sides forsake their beds. They can't sleep. Why? 
يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا Because they are calling their Lord out of fear and hope. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And from what we have given them, they are spending. So, O oh Allah, tell us what is their reward? What is their prize? Listen to the ayah after it. فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُونَ No soul knows of the full reward Allah has prepared for them. As a reward for what they used to do. No one knows of the delights Allah has prepared for them. You may ask how come Allah Almighty has covered the prize of the people of the prayer of night. Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim takes a stab at the answer and he says in his book Hadi Al-Arwah. He says the same way that the people of the night who pray made an effort to hide their good deeds from the eyes of people Allah Almighty compensated them by hiding their reward and keeping it a surprise for the day of judgment Allahu Akbar does that mean that we don't know anything that the people of the night will be given the people who start praying from tonight during this evening after Aisha we don't know what Allah is going to give them no we have an idea by the way Imam Al-Tirmidhi narrates in his jami' that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said on the authority of Ali ibn Abi Talib إِنَّ فِي الْجَنَّةِ غُرَفَا تُرَى ظُهُورُهَا مِن بُطُونِهَا وَبُطُونُهَا مِن ظُهُورِهَا In paradise there are rooms that are so beautiful that you can see their outsides from their insides and you can see their insides from their outsides. So an Arab Bedouin man stood up and he said who do these rooms belong to, O Messenger of Allah? And he gave him the answer. Five-part recipe. He says, These rooms belong to those who speak beautiful words. They choose their words. Number two, they distribute food. Number three, they fast continuously number four they pray at night when people are asleep what else has Allah Almighty given them other than these rooms what does he give the people of the night al haythami narrates in his majma'at zawaid on the authority of Abi Darda that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said tell me brothers and sisters if you have heard of anything like this before in your life thalathatun yuhibbuhumullahu ta'ala there are three categories of people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and he smiles at them a smile that befits his majesty and glory imagine Allah the mighty the compeller Al-Aziz Allah smiling at a mortal and number three he is happy with them and one of those three categories of people is a person who has a beautiful spouse and a comfortable bedding and despite that he or she gets up leaving their spouse and they pray to Allah so Allah Almighty says if this person wanted to continue sleeping they could have sleeping however they have chosen to remember me you may say brother Ali what is the significance when Allah Almighty smiles at a person so what what happens in another hadith which Ahmad narrates, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives us the answer and he said, وَلَوْ ضَحِيكَ رَبُّكَ لِعَبْدٍ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَلَا حِسَابَ عَلَيْهِ And when your Lord smiles at a person, then such a person will not have any accountability on the Day of Judgment. Praying at night has, brings with it these types of prizes. Who is willing to pay the dowry of Jannah? It can begin from a single or two rak'at that you pray tonight. Back to the hadith, he said, hold on to the night prayer because it is the way of the righteous people before you and it is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. Do you remember phrase number three and four? He said, and it is a means of erasing sins and a means of protecting you from sins. Dear brother, dear sister, if you have sins of the past, that you are so scared that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask you about them on the day of judgment, then you can erase them during the night. And if you have sins that you have repented from, but you are scared that you're going to come back to them some point in the future because they're so attractive, so appealing, so sweet smelling, if you are afraid that you're going to go back to them and you need a shield, you can find that shield in the night. 
the sins of the past and the sins of the future, the night takes care of it by the permission of Allah. And perhaps this is one of the secrets why the Messenger وسلم, described the night prayer as being Sharaful Mu'min, the honor of the believer. A person who is a chronic sinner, pursuing the disobedience of Allah behind the veils of night and showing people a righteous facade, this person feels humiliated. This person feels disgraced. This person feels a sense of fire burning him or her away. A real sense of humiliation. And the night prayer helps us liberate ourselves from this. And thus it is the honor of the believer. Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Angel Jibreel said to the messenger in one of the most beautiful sermons you will ever hear. He said to him, Ya Muhammad, عِشْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مَيِّتْ وَأَحْبِبْ مَنْ شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مُفَارِقُهُ وَأَعْمَلْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مَجْزِيٌّ بِهِ وَأَعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنْ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْلِ وَعِزَّهُ إِسْتِغْنَاؤُهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ He said to him, O oh Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, live as long as you wish. In the end you will have to die. And love whoever you wish. In the end you will be separated from them. And do whatever you wish. In the end you will be held accountable. And realize, O oh Messenger, that the honor of the believer is found in his prayer of the night. Realize, O oh Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the honor of the believer is found in his prayer of the night. And the dignity of the believer is found when he is not reliant upon others. Honor! Real honor that those two or four or six units you pray at night bring with them. An honor Allah Almighty will make public. The same way that those who hide those sins and insist upon them behind closed doors, Allah will have to disgrace them sooner or later if they don't repent. Likewise, you righteous Muslim, when you pray at night away from the eyes of people, Allah Almighty will make your good deeds public whether you like it or not. Noor. And how beautiful were the words of Ata al Khurasani who said, Qiyamul Layli, Quwatun fil Badan, Wa Mahyatun lil Jasad, Wa Noorun fil Basar, Wa Diyaun fil Qalbi, Wa Inna Rajula, Yakumu, Yusalli, Mina Layli, Fayusbihu, Fariha, Yajudu Dalika, Fi Kalbihi. He says, The night prayer is a means of life for your body, and light in your eyes. And luminosity in your heart and strength in your limbs and a person who prays at night will wake up the next morning feeling happy a real happiness that mixes with his soul Allahu Akbar are you depressed are you anxious are you scared of the future are you scared of the unknown the night prayer is part of our cure dear brothers and sisters Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib he would say a person who prays at night will be looked at by those who don't even know him or her and they will say inni uhibbu hadha rajul i love such a man i don't even know him i love such a man muhammad ibn sirin when people would say him they would say when people would see him they would say la ilaha illallah subhanallah his face was a sermon his face was a reminder and muhammad ibn sirin used to pray at night and Waqi' ibn al-Jarrah, the shaykh of Imam al-Shafi'i, or one of his teachers, when people would see him, they would say, Hada malak, this must be an angel, this is an angel. And Waqi' ibn al-Jarrah used to pray at night. Imam ibn al-Qayyim documents in his book, Rawdatul al-Muhibbeen, that even some of the women who were so keen on the night prayer, some of them would be asked, how come you are taking care of this act of worship so diligently? And she would say, She would say, because the night prayer beautifies the face. And I want to have a beautiful face. So although this is not our main intention, but it even has cosmetic benefits. La ilaha illallah. This is the night prayer. Our intention is to glorify Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. Honor of the believer. Back to the hadith. Maybe you have memorized it by now. Hold on to the night prayer because it is the way of the righteous people before you. And it is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. And it erases the sins of the past and protects you from the sins of the future. I am sure after hearing these few words, some of us will be eager for the sun to set right now. 
And we wish that those hours would turn into minutes that would turn into seconds so that we may put out that prayer mat and glorify Allah and forgive Him. Ask Him to forgive us for being so far away from this act of worship. I am sure, and therefore perhaps we have some questions we need to address about the night prayer. Here are a few questions that I have chosen for you, dear brothers and sisters, and ask Allah to guide me and you. Question number one from the four. How much should I pray when I am standing to Allah? How much should I recite from the Quran? The Messenger وسلم, gives us something to work with. He said, Man qama bi ashri ayatin lam yuktab min al ghafilin, wa man qama bi mi'ati ayatin kutiba min al qanitin, wa man qama bi alfi ayatin kutiba min al muqantirin. Whoever prays to Allah Almighty using 10 ayat of the Quran, Allah will not document him from being from the negligent. MashaAllah. Whoever, however, prays to Allah Almighty with 100 ayat from the Quran, Allah will document him from being from the devout. And whoever prays at night for Allah with 1,000 ayat from the Quran, Allah will document him from the muqantireen, meaning those who gather a lot of good deeds. What is a qintar? They gather a qintar. The linguist, they say, as Ibn Faris mentions, he says, a qintar, according to the majority of the linguists, is 4,000 dinars of gold. Others, they said, a qintar is an unknown qadrun majhulun min al dhahab, an unknown huge sum of gold. However, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another hadith has given us an idea of what he meant when he said a qintar. He would say as Imam al-Tabarani narrates, wa qintarun khayrun min dunya wa ma fiha. One qintar in the eyes of Allah is better than the whole world and everything within it. One qintar. That's for those who pray with 1,000 ayat. You may say, ya akhi, where am I going to get 1,000 ayat from? Imam ibn Hajar says, here is a shortcut should you need it sometimes he said from surah al-mulk chapter 67 of the quran until the end of the quran surah al-nas chapter 114 there are 1000 ayat right there from surah al-mulk tabarak alladhi biyadihi al-mulk till surah al-nas there are 1000 ayat for those who wish to start training themselves to recite 1000 ayat question number two brother ali i haven't memorized much quran is there a basic requirement? Allah Almighty said, فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Recite whatever you can from the Qur'an, whatever is easy from the Qur'an. In fact, Abi Nu'aym narrates in his Haliyatul Awliya that Abu Ghalib, he said, that companion Abdullah ibn Umar would sometimes visit us in Mecca. And he would say to me, very close to Salatul Fajr, he would say to me, why don't you get up and pray even if you only need recite two-thirds of the Qur'an, if that's all what you can do. He said, SubhanAllah, how can I recite two-thirds of the Qur'an when it's almost Salatul Fajr? The night is so short. He said to him, don't you know that Qul huwa Allahu Ahad equates to one-third of the Qur'an? Who here has not memorized Surah Al-Ikhlas? Allahu Akbar. Begin, brothers and sisters, with something manageable and small and work your way up. This is the answer to question number two. What if my memorization of the Quran is little? Question number three, what if I place my alarm clock and I fail to wake up and I miss my night prayer and I had made the intention? The answer, Imam al-Nasai narrates on the authority of Abi Darda that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man ata firashahu wa huwa yuridu an yaquma min al-layli faghalabathu aynahu كُتِبَ لَهُ مَا نَوَىٰ وَكَانَ نَوْمُهُ عَلَيْهِ صَدَقَ مِنْ رَبِّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Whoever has the intention when going to sleep that they're going to pray at night but then their eyes overcome them in sleep and they wake up when the sun has risen or at Salatul Fajr Allah Almighty will write for them the reward of the night prayer that they had intended and that sleep of theirs would be a charity from Allah upon them. This is the answer to question number three. We have one minute remaining exactly, so we will conclude with question number four. Brother Ali, I hear so much about the beauty of the night prayer. What if I am struggling to attain it? They say that it is paradise on earth. They say those uh, tears cannot be measured with anything quantifiable in dunya. What if I am struggling to taste it for one year, two years, ten years? Thabit al-Bunani, he gives an answer. He said, كَابَتُ الصَّلَاةَ عِشْرِينَ سَنَةً 
وَتَنَعَمْتُ بِهَا عَشْرِينَ سَنَةً I forced myself to pray at night for 20 years and then I enjoyed my night prayer for 20 years. It takes effort and mujahada, a lot of striving. Dear brothers and sisters, congratulations to those who please their Lord before they meet Him. Congratulations to those who illuminate their graves before they're lowered inside. Congratulations to those who pray at night before they are prayed upon. I ask Allah to make us people of the night. Do you ever get worried that your child may click on the wrong video online? Do you wish there was a safe channel for your peace of mind? Well, there is. The number one rated Muslim kids channel in the world, One for Kids TV, is here to solve all these issues. The channel has no advertisements and is safe for your children to browse and watch their favorite videos. With a wide selection of cartoons, songs, educational videos, and much more, your children will not only stay entertained, but also learn so much about their deen. You can listen to songs while your device is switched off and you can download videos to watch them offline. One for Kids TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means the small amount you pay for your subscription is a continuous charity for you, as all the funds raised go towards the production of new cartoons and educational films for your children. The One for Kids TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku, so you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 14-day trial.